Office pranksters of Reddit, what's the best prank you've ever pulled on a co-worker? Pretty simple to do, but zip tie the lever that adjusts the height of the chair so that when they sit in it, it lowers all the way down. Then when they get up, it raises back up. It will take them a minute to think about looking under the seat, and it's funny to watch them sink when they sit down. This was a little bit ago, but my co-worker, we will call him Bob, decided to make his screensaver pictures of his family. One day he walked away without locking his computer. I copied his directory of pictures to the filler share and pointed his screensaver at it. Now I could easily add and remove pictures to his gallery. I then started modifying the pictures in Photoshop. Slowly, all of the pictures of people, his kids, his wife, animals, started to get Bob's face. Comma slowly, all, of people, his kids, his wife, animals, started to get Bob's face. But that sounds just like it could be either a really crappy mental disorder or a really good sci-fi film. I worked with a guy who was kind of an butthole and not very computer literate. He acted as though he was better than everyone, because our business process had a bottleneck where he had to review documents, so he basically acted like a self-important butthole. One day when he was in a meeting, I noticed he had left his computer unlocked and also that no one else was around when I happened to walk by his cubicle. I did not work near him. I hopped on his machine real quick, took a screenshot of his desktop and the 400 file icons he kept on the desktop, and then made a folder on his C drive called desktop icons and moved them all in there and set his desktop background to the screenshot. It took him the rest of the day to figure out what was wrong and he had like a vendetta about finding out who did it, but since no one like him, no one would give him any clues it was me. I did this to an old roommate, except I took it a step further. Before you put the screenshot as the desktop background, rotate the image 180 degrees, then set it as the background, hide all the desktop icons and toolbar, then go into display settings and set the display to rotate 180 degrees. Everything will look normal, except the upside down cursor. Put a small RC car in a nearby office trash can, under the bag so you can't see it. Just twitch the remote once in a while to make noise. Variation. I took a CD player with headphones plugged in, turned it all the way down, and then stashed it above the acoustic panels right above my boss's desk. Bonus points for putting an annoying song on loop. It's small but I have a friend at work who keeps leaving his computer unlocked. I go into the mouse settings and slow down the mouse movement as much as possible. We have three huge monitors and it's such a hilarious time to watch him try to mouse back over to the settings window that I've hidden in the bottom corner of one of the monitors. Change his cursor appearance to the loading one. The one that appears when Windows is busy. This will drive him crazy. Plugged in a spare USB keyboard into my co-worker's desktop. Would randomly hold down the shift key when he was entering his password. Lock his terminal when he turned around to talk to someone. Or tap the windows key while he was typing. I'm not good at not laughing. I managed to hold it in for 4 days. Until he finally lost it and started smashing his keyboard and unplugging all the USB cables. He got to the one for the extra keyboard. Looked around. Then yanked on the cable hard. And the spare keyboard skipped across my desk and slammed into my cube wall. I laughed so hard I cried for almost 15 minutes. I had this prank pulled on me. This was in my first job, about 12 years ago. We weren't allowed to share music files via work email, but my work buddy begged me to anyway. I'd only just sent him some song he asked for, when I got a pop up from an anon sender basically saying, this is IT, we observed you sent, blah blah, blah and we're locking your account. I flipped out, thinking it was for real, and then I hear him laughing a few cubicles away. He sent me the pop up. I totally fell for it. Bastard. Two of my co-workers sat across from each other. One day they were both out and our boss says hey let's switch their cubes while they're gone so we did exactly that. We literally moved everything so their desks were exactly the same but on opposite sides. At a previous job we took turns with an on-call phone. I got it one week and found the previous co-worker, D, hadn't signed out of hangouts which we used company-wide for IM. We worked in cubicle farm sort of environment, and he sat next to C, though sort of back-to-back. -back. They were pretty good work bros, 
but not especially close. I waited until both D and C were on phone calls, and messaged C, but it looked like it was coming from D. Hey, my neck is hurting. Would you mind coming over here and rubbing on my shoulders? I was about 5 rows over when I hit send, but we all clearly heard C say excuse me. Elegant, awkward and completely harmless. Mid 90s, cleared a friend co-worker's cube out while he was on vacation in Europe, and sealed it off with crime scene tape. When he came back, called him into our manager's office and told him a fairly elaborate, extremely believable story about how the office had been raided, and everything from his cube taken into evidence. Freaked him out so bad that we had to come clean with him almost immediately. I used to work at a small business that was run by two best friends in their late 50s. It was a very chill business, and they had fantastic senses of humor. It was like having two squabbling brothers who were both very talented in their respective fields. The two of them had a yearly ritual where they'd play pranks on each other on their birthdays. COO's birthday the CEO gave him fake documents that made it look like he'd sold the company to a random dude in India. CEO pretended to be incredibly enthusiastic and naive, saying how giving all our customer data to India will help our business. COO responded by casually moving CEO's wheelchair to the other side of the room until he apologized for stressing him out. CEO's birthday the COO changed the workplace safety policy to require that the CEO had to wear water wings, a bicycle helmet, and several balloons for visibility. The CEO who had a wheelchair already, was a super good sport about it and kept annoying the COO by pretending to be significantly more disabled than he actually was. This went on for the entire day, until the COO got so annoyed that he reverted the safety policy. This is so cute. I used to be a production manager and anytime we would get someone new on the shop floor, I would tell them that our maintenance supervisor, who was in on this, needed help moving some equipment in the basement. All they had to do was walk through the two doors at the north side of the building and said, maintenance super, would be waiting, there was no basement. The classic in pizza shops is to send the noob for a dough repair kit when there was a hole in the dough. We send this one kid from our domius to the one 5 miles away who sent him to Pizza Hut, who sent him to the Domino's in the next county. He called an hour after I sent him out to say he was on the way to the next county. I work at a grocery store and I love the office. Inspired by Jim Halpert, I got all of my co-workers to call someone by the wrong name all day. His name is Darren and everyone called him Daryl. He was so mad about it. Now that I think of it, the office is a great source of pranks. Thanks for reminding me and happy cake day to you too. Not my prank, my grandfather's. Back before I was born, he had a wealthy boss who always drove to work in really nice cars. They had dedicated employee parking spots, so you could always tell it was the boss car from. 1. The spot. 2. The quality. 3. The vanity plate, which always read dog x with the x being whatever number of car it was that he owned. So one day, my grandfather, who never sees anything as too far for a joke, bought the cheapest, oldest used car he could find, gave it the dog license plate for whatever was next in line, and parked it in his boss spot. I put a box of water on a co-worker's forklift with the intention of him getting on and getting soaked. Well the warehouse big wig director came around the corner and hopped on real quick to move the forklift and the joke's punchline was not near as funny. Not an office, but my teachers in middle school would pull a prank on students every year. They would find out who has and hasn't seen Back to the Future. Then teacher A would say dang, I can't find my flux capacitor. John, can you go ask Mr. Smith if he has my flux capacitor then Mr. Smith would send John to Mrs. Holly saying he lent it to her, but then Mrs. Holly would say she gave it to Dr. Ferdinand, and so on. John ends up walking back and forth around the school for about 30 minutes, all the while, every class in the entire school is laughing at John behind his back for not knowing what a flux capacitor is. Looking back at it, this was probably pretty mean and embarrassing to do to middle school students, but the teachers always seemed to know which students were able to take a joke and not get too upset by it. Had a similar prank played one me and a few others once, 
We were new to the military and were told to go find chem light batteries which don't exist. We went off pretending to look for them but we really just found a spot to hide and do nothing for the day. The guy in charge felt bad because he thought we were looking all day. We never told him who really got pranked. Someone took the ball out of my mouth once. Late at night when I had a deadline. I just took someone else's ball, used it, then returned it. The next morning when I came in, I very loudly announced that someone castrated my mouse and I needed a new mouse. I'm not usually a prankster, but I did get one guy good, who was known as a major prankster. So, he had this fancy car that he mentioned to me at an earlier contract, but he hadn't told me what it was because he was trying to keep his contract prices secret, and the car would have got people curious. On the current contract, he would usually come to work in beat up Land Rover, and as it was night shift, if he parked in the roadway near the worksite gates, his habit was to leave side lights on. So on the night in question, I saw a Triumph Stag parked with side lights on. At the time, it was considered a fairly fancy car. Hum. On the way down to the platform, we were doing renovations to the platforms at Kensington. I pondered on what to do if he was there. I had checked there was no sign of the Land Rover, so that would mean the Triumph was almost certainly his. As I spotted him on the platform, moving a heavy paving slab, the idea came to me. Walking up to him, I said hi Kevin, hey you didn't park your Land Rover around the back did you? Uh, no I didn't and the way he reacted to my mention of the Land Rover made me pretty certain the car was his. Oh good, if you had done, you probably wouldn't be able to get it out anytime soon. Some drunkard came out of the Tierra Hotel across the way, and he plowed his jag into a Triumph stag right outside the gates. Never seen such a tangled mess he goes white as a sheet, and almost drops the paving slab in his hurry to put it down safe, and starts hurrying away. Before he got off the platform, I couldn't hold the laughter any longer, he realized he'd been had and came back. He was a bit pee off, but was a good enough sport that he could take a joke as well as dish them out. He then explained why my joke caused such a strong reaction. In the year he had the car, it had spent half that time being repaired due to two incidents, one while sitting at a red light, and once while parked. And he had just got it back from the last repair. Lucky timing for my joke. One of my tech supervisors won the leadership award for the quarter which includes a lovely headshot for the slideshow. He hated this photo, which made me contact the company photographer and get a copy. I proceeded to make 200 copies of various sizes to plaster around his office. No surface was safe. I took apart his fan and taped little ones on each blade. One on the phone receiver, under the chair, inside the lamp, and basically wallpapered his desk with photos of himself. My favorite was the 3 foot poster size cutout I made to take his place at meetings. It was 3 years ago and he's still finding photos. Did a screenshot of my co-worker's desktop and then made it his background image and moved all of his real icons off the screen. My co-workers were always pranking, and one day they did the tape mouse thing. Well I narrowed it down to a guy and did the desktop thing to him. He ended up power cycling his machine. He was livid. Turns out that someone down the hall had seen our pranks and wanted in. I'd revenge pranked the wrong person. I wrote your welcome on a tiny piece of paper and taped it over the sensor on the bottom of my co-worker's computer mouse. It was hard not to bust out laughing as he plugged and plugged, rebooted, and checked the windows settings before finally looking at the bottom of it. A piece of scotch tape does the same thing but is less noticeable. I was making a sandwich and suddenly everyone in the office wanted me to make them a sandwich. I left the plastic wrapping on all the cheese slices. Try and bite through that John. Not a prank but funny story. My friend and I were camping and roasting hot dogs on the fire. He didn't know each dog was individually wrapped. And proceeded to eat two before telling me that they tasted funny. Being the recipient of and partook in. Had entire desk and all the contents wrapped in aluminum foil when I was on vacation. Coworker would randomly add keys to my keychain when I was away from my desk. Randomly put a piece of tape on bottom of laser mouse so it would quit working. Routinely unplug mouse and keyboard from coworkers computers. Coworker printed off a ton of small portraits of himself and then hid them in locations through my desk. Picked up phone and there he was on the handset. Removed the last post-it note from dispenser and there was his face. There are probably lots more, but I'll have to think on this.
At college, one of the idiots in a friend's dorm got sent to rehab for a short stint. Whilst he was out the rest of the guys precision wrapped everything he owned in aluminium foil, taking great care to wrap every item as precisely and smoothly as possible. When he came back they convinced him that he had done it himself before leaving. Fake firing. After two individuals had escalated a series of pranks on one another, it had to come to an end. Leading up there were the typical things such as desk covered in aluminum foil, changing screen savers to gay pee, durian wafers left on a plate without the identifying packaging, cables loosened on computers, etc. The straw that broke the camel's back being a spoofed email where one individual was led to believe his email account had been used to send an offensive email to a customer, with a spoofed customer response that they were taking legal action. Fast forward, we called them both into a room and made up a story about damage to company property and CFO said they both had to go. Delivered straight face, one guy starts freaking out about what to tell his wife, newborn to support, and so on. Literally had tears in his eyes. Hey we're just messing with you but the pranks have to stop. They did. I worked in an office and would remove all but 3 or 4 staples out of my co-worker's stapler every day since he left before me. We often staple a stack of documents so you would hear him at his desk. Staple. 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 Click. Click dang IT. He thought the janitorial staff that cleaned the office at night was stealing his staples. I never told him it was me. Connecting a Bluetooth dongle to the back of their PC with a keyboard and mouse. All day I would just knock the mouse around or type random letters and stuff. He thought he was hacked by the Chinese. His little words. Every time I would do it for prolonged times he would call co-workers over to his desk and it would magically stop. I had to give it up when he called IT over. I also popped off the M and N keys from his keyboard and switched them. You'd be surprised how many people are hunt and peckers. Of course his password had an M in it as his name started with an M. So the day started off great with those windows error bloops and then him calling IT to reset his password. LOL. Another year I convinced a bunch of my friends outside of work to call one of our salesmen with bogus opportunities and to keep referring to him by the wrong name. His name was Derek. So they asked Daryl, Darnell, Dirk, Rick ETC insisting that they spoke to him last week. One year, our manager was out on travel so I replaced all of his personal effects in his office with images that I took and printed off his personal effects. So all that remained was his desk and chair and a bunch of images of a monitor, PC, stapler, file cabinets etc. Good times. Terran from Linus Tech Tips was pranked very similarly to this and blamed it on NVIDIA drivers. Two things we did when people were out for a couple weeks. Grew chia seeds in his keyboard so it was a small field when he got back. Another time different guy. We just started leaving any trash on his desk. Things that wouldn't smell. Then say before he came back we got some gift wrap and wrapped up the whole cube. Bonus was we hid a six pack of Smirnoff ices in the rubble. The Chia keyboard is such a hilarious image. I created a phishing version of our firewall login. Then called our admin over and asked him to log in so I get get to some blocked website. The fake page wrote his password to a text file. Then redirected to the actual login. Making it seem like it didn't take the first time. Then I wrote his password down and put it in an envelope and left it on his desk while he was at lunch. I got permission to do all this from the CTO so we hid around the corner to watch his reaction. At first it was bewilderment, then slowly moved to anger. Turns out it was the password he uses for everything in life. He wasn't too happy about it but the boss and I got a good laugh. Oh jeez. I knew someone way back when who proudly announced that he used the same password everywhere. Not bright. If a co-worker left their computer unlocked I'd take a screenshot of it, hide all their icons and then change their background to the screenshot. So they'd try to click on stuff and it wouldn't work. A piece of tape over the optical thing on the bottom of a mouse is always good. Changing the height of someone's chair every day after they leave or before they come in. That one takes a few weeks to work. Once I changed someone's host file so that Facebook can dig. This was before Reddit existed, would redirect to our company webpage. In a hurry he went to our IT department and asked why sites were being blocked. 
Our IT guy was cool so he helped him figure it out, but it was pretty funny. Once we taped a picture of a goat to the wall in the men's bathroom stall, then put a bottle of lotion and a bunch of squished up tissues next to it. Boss thinks he's clever by randomly running up behind me and shouting, You're fired. Not because I'm actually fired, but just to mess with me. Maybe it was funny the first time, but definitely not 564 times later. A few drops of super glue in the locks to his car or office is hilarious. Back in college I was working part time in a metal work factory, the parts we made were unfinished, that is, viciously sharp, so we sealed them in super tough plastic for shipping and everyone on the floor was issued a knife to cut the plastic. We all went on lunch one day and some joker decided to seal all the knives in the plastic. We thought it was a brilliant prank as we got to watch him get escorted off of sight and an extra long paid lunch break whilst someone got sent out to buy a new knife to cut the others out of the plastic. Sealing all knives is just dumb as frick. Work as a firefighter. One time someone ran a dripset, IV bag, through the drop ceiling into a neighboring bunk room, directly over the head of another firefighter. When everybody fell asleep he barely opened the line up so it would drip one drop of water every 45 seconds or so, directly onto the sleeping firefighter head. My sister was a firefighter and had to deal with chauvinistic macho jerks on the job. She was a bear hunter and got a bear one time. The bear had all these ticks, so she took some of the biggest, fullest ones and dipped them in chocolate, and then left them on a plate for her co-workers to find. The boss took us to an NBA game in the company's private box. The following Monday, I convinced our accounting department to mock up a bill for tens of thousands of dollars worth of repairs and damages from the arena. His boss presents the bill to him and he starts to panic. He held a meeting with everybody who went to the game, trying to get us to back him up about the state of the suite when we left. We were going to let it go on all day but I thought he might have a heart attack so I ended it quick. The look on his face when we let him in on the joke was priceless. Not an office, but I was a shift manager at an ice cream place in college and I used to tell newbies that the owner wanted the M&MS sorted by color. 5 pounds bags take a while. I shared an office with a guy who was pretty paranoid. For instance, one time the receptionist accidentally burned some popcorn, and he ducked low to the ground and put his shirt over his breathing holes to protect himself from smoke inhalation. He used to plan exit routes. He once looked out our second story window and mused, if there's a fire in this building, I'm going to use a pile of pallets down there as a crumple zone. He refused to throw bloody nose tissues in the regular trash because they were a biohazard. So he kept them in his desk drawer until he could find a safer way to dispose of them yes. He had like 4 guns at home in case the government tried to take his guns away. He was a 9-11 truther. He would deliberately watch videos of people getting maimed and killed to desensitize himself. He took one semester of capoeira in college and thought he was a martial arts master, often practicing moves like Mac from Always Sunny. Anyway, one time I noticed that the company hired a guy to come install security cameras at our building. With my boss's permission, I bought a fake security camera and installed it in our office late at night, pointing right at his desk. He came in the next day and was noticeably upset. He tried to laugh it off like lol big brother's watching us and I just said lol yeah but then it kept nagging at him. He was like, are you okay with this I was like, well yeah, I don't plan on doing anything wrong. So, so then he gets up and he says, well I'm going to do this and he closes the office door partially such that the corner of the door blocked the line of sight to his desk, and he sat back down. So I texted my boss and said, he blocked the camera with the door. So seconds later, my boss appears, and he asserts his dominance by opening the door back up while staring right at my coworker. So my coworker says, he says, actually, I did that on purpose because I don't appreciate being spied on while I'm working. My boss says, why, what's the problem and we both start playing the if you have nothing to hide angle pretty hard. Sensing that we were starting to suspect he had something to hide. He started to get defensive and finally exclaimed, Sometimes I like to pick my nose, okay, and I don't want people taking footage of it. I got my co-worker to angrily tell our boss that he picks his nose. I couldn't have dreamed for a better outcome to that prank. One time we shrunk someone's entire desk. 
We hid their monitor and computer and everything, and created miniature paper versions of everything. Not a prank but when I was younger I worked at a parts store. Didn't pay much but it was one of those jobs where we all got along and cut up all day. Two years into I finished school and got a great job offer somewhere else. Before I left they gave me a great send off. They didn't know however that I wrote 500 goofy little notes and placed them everywhere under everything in the store. They were finding them a couple years afterwards. I hope they got a smile out of all of them. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.